The XSplit Broadcaster. So, uh, hello everyone. This is the Crystal Tune. I am Casey Stranger. By everyone, it's probably zero people, but you might be watching this on YouTube. Who knows? Um, Hi, Stalker. Anyways, as always, the Crystal Tune is brought to you by not only XSplit Broadcaster, um, Get XSplit, but also Tractor Blend, who once agreed to give me 50 cents for every time I shouted him out. So we'll see if I remember to do that. Um, tractor blind, tractor blend. I never get it right. Anyways, I would uh, have heard it one. Yeah, I I've heard it both ways. Um, I am also joined by two of my regular players. Uh, hopefully soon to be three, as well as two new folks. Uh, there is Prophet, who is the sword thing, and also a uh, Spork, um, who has already switched into his character name. Wonderful, lovely, great, fantastic. Okay. Um, so, me look what a jerk. if I would have been thinking, I would have written a really nice summary of what you guys were doing before now, but I forgot, so I'm just going to make it nice off the top of my head. So, last time, uh, the party had recently left the Yuan T city of Vixeth, which to uh, give you some idea, let's hop over to the world map here real quick. They were somewhere right around here, uh, just east of the big mountain in Scrape Forest. Uh, this is where, you know, Fallon met his mother. Um, there was an altercation, something about a crown. Uh, they may have left town with said crown um, and decided to make their way back south. Um, that's really summarizing a lot, but I'm going to leave it there. Um, on their way back, they did find an abandoned, or at least abandoned looking, um, goblin camp. Uh, found some money, some magical items inside. And then the world went sideways and upside down, and they met a creature from nightmares. Um, again, there was another altercation. Um, Halal, who is no longer with us, might have turned into a dragon. Um, Alistair, who is no longer with us, may have made a deal to become the Winter Knight. And they may have banished this creature and gotten out of the Nightmare Realm. Oh, I forgot. The Nightmare Realm was created in part um, by one, by a tabaxi, a cat person who went by the name of Spex. Um, who did wind up getting out of that world with them. Alistair being the Winter Knight and Halal being a dragon, both wound up going to the Feywild, which is where they're at now. Uh, but Alistair gave them one last gift uh, before he left, basically opened a teleportation portal that brought them most of the way to the Tower of Ennis, uh, which is all the way down at the bottom of the map right here. Um, yeah, one of my characters may have done battle as an ancient red dragon. Um, in the last session, uh, that'd be stopped. Um, Basically, you missed some shit. Okay. So, but now we pick up with um, Kane, Fallon, Colleen, um, and Spex uh, just approaching the Tower of Innis. Um, they've noticed that there's actually a ring of tents, uh, which appear to be some kind of like army platoon or something like that um, set up around the tower. Uh, the time is evening, uh, perhaps an hour before dusk, um, and the, the tents and ballista um, of these troops are clearly visible. Um, as you approach the tower, you catch glimpses of the soldiers themselves and are surprised to notice that none of them are much taller than about four feet. Um, and you conclude that either someone has enlisted an army of very stocky children, um, or these are halflings. Um, as you approach close, a familiar face pops out of the largest tent. And a moment later, Ethna Greensword emerges from the tent. <laughs> yep. Uh, she looks like you remember blue hair, blue eyes, blonde shoulder length hair, sort of live frame. Yeah, blue hair. German accent. <laughs> um, you know, if anything's different, it's just that she has a worn look about her. 
that you don't really remember. Um, but she calls out to you, uh, Colleen, Fallon, and Kane? They told me you were here, but to be honest, I hadn't expected to see you. Uh, why don't you come here? We were just having a meeting. As, as you walk, I'm just going to kind of nudge Fallon and say, don't, don't mention the ruby. Um, so we come back to where um, Ethna has just said, um, why don't you come here? We were just having a meeting. And like as you walked, I just kind of nudged you in the, si in the side and said, don't, don't mention the ruby. Um, and I say, and I, I look at Kane and, and I, I, I wink at him and I say, what, what sort of meeting? Or to, to Ethna, sorry. Okay. Um, well, we've got a bit of a situation going on here. If you come in, I'm sure they'll update you, but the high priestess is here. Um, a commander from the halfling territory as well. Is it the snake people? The snake people. And she sort of furs her eyebrows a little bit. Um, <laughs> sounds like you there... may have something to update us on as well. Forget, forget I mentioned it. Uh, go on. So much. <laughs> she gives you sort of a thin, wry smile uh, and uh, says, well, come in, come in. Uh, who's this with you, by the way? <clears throat> well, you remember the, the, the cane here who you bought that cursed ruby from. Uh, no, I'm actually talking about, and at this point, um, Specs <laughs> uh, pipes nice up. Nice stealth, no? And uh, says, name's Specs. He's like, well, nice to meet you. And you can tell, she obviously looks kind of curious. Um, there actually aren't really tabaxi in Inongrin, so so that's interesting. But uh, yeah, do you, do you go ahead and follow her into the big like command tent? Sure. I, I like kind of hide behind Fallon. <laughs> okay. As we go in, since he mentioned the ruby. Um, Ethna, see, uh, you did notice Ethna react to that, but she seems to be shoving it to the side for the moment. Um, so when you enter the tent, uh, you recognize uh, Nistia Cantaniel, who's the uh, half-elven high priest of Innis. Uh, she has sort of a worried, pensive look on her face. And if you remember, she's like somewhat older half-elf. Um, not super old yet, though. Um, there's also a halfling you don't recognize. Um, he appears middle-aged. He has sort of bronze skin. His hair is black. Uh, he actually has a black goatee. Um, his face is serious, and his body is curiously free of the sort of portliness that uh, most halflings get in their middle middle age. Um, and you watch as his eyes fall on Specs, whom he addresses immediately. And he says, you don't seem to be from around here. And Spex says, indeed not. I made my way here from Gavala. The Aspash jungle is my home. And he leans back and says, well, I'll be damned. But I believe you. Can't say I've ever seen a tabaxi in Einongrun. Um, and then his eyes sort of shift to the rest of you, and he says, Sorry, where are my manners? My name is Teofil Greenwood, head of the Halfling Special Forces Unit. And he smirks slightly as he says that. No relation to Miss Green's sword here. Um, I'd like to talk to all of you, but before I do, uh, Specs, you said your name was? Uh, could we possibly have a word in private? Um, slightly confused look crosses Specs' face, but he nods, um, and the two of them leave together, and you'll never see him ever again. Um, <laughs> can we see his oh, hide? Like, was... Can someone have his like tanned hide as a cloak later, like a bad guy? He's like, a... <laughs> yes, I totally forgot his Specs' whistle. My tabaxi now. cloak. <laughs> Let me put on my. His pelt will make an appearance later in the game. Um... All right. Uh, so, Man, with, how did you really catch that guy? So with that, um, Ethna uh, pulls in a few chairs for the rest of you and gestures for you to sit. Um, you do so. There's sort of a moment of awkward silence, and um, someone's about to say something when one more familiar face uh, pops inside the tent. Um, 
another halfling whose eyebrows rise as her eyes snap first to Cain, then to the others in the room. Uh, she's dark-skinned, raven hair, dressed in a simple brown cloak. She says, I was going to say dinner's ready, but I get the feeling our guests might have a word to say first. And you recognize Mira Hillcrest. Which, Fallon, do you remember who that is? No, I don't. Sorry, that's I was, I was about to ask if I should know who that is. So remember back in Dale's Harbor when you went to that, like, underground hideout for oh in harbors dale she's is she the one who poisoned him she may have yeah been. okay i remember now okay yeah that's your best friend so in that awkward silence <laughs> that was about to break, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Confound, oh, confound. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I i don't think i want to eat uh whatever you may have prepared <laughs> She, I, I could forage. Um, I, I'm, good. I'm good. I had a big lunch. Uh, yeah. She grimaces slightly and, sa and looks at the others in the tent and says, shall I fetch you something? I'm looking around at the others. Fallon is, and he's like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ethna looks over at you. I, says, I, I like elbow... Fallon in the side of it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, there are also two others in the room. When I made my notes for this game, I didn't have this, but I forgot they are actually here. Um, so, uh, Maxis and Ironine, why don't you describe your characters? Because the two of you, as you look around, you also notice these two. Uh, why don't we start with Maxis? Okay. Um, I am a... A uh, goliath that's about eight foot tall. Um, unlike most goliaths, he is actually wearing clothing, uh, but kind of looks like he just like have won this vest that he's got on from a card game. It looks like it came from a dwarf because it does not fit well. But. Uh, I just say he's kind of sitting off in the corner. He's not necessarily really engaging too much with most of this, uh, the planning of all of this stuff, but he's just kind of hanging out for now. Uh, he has a lot of, uh, his tattoos on his facial is a lot more heavy on the left side than it is actually symmetrical which is kind of weird, but that's what it is. Uh, and he's carrying currently just a great ass strapped across his back. A what? A great axe. <laughs> All right. And, Boys, uh, and Irene, think. am I pronouncing that right? I was going with Aaronin, but, you know. Aaronin? Whatever. All right, Aaronin. That, that's off. actually probably correct. I'm guessing that's probably right. I don't know. Given that it's Irish and not. Yeah. yeah. All right. It seems like a more popular way to pronounce it than Irish accent. All right, cool. Anyways, um, I know I'm like a young adult, human person. I don't know. Uh, very noticeably purple hair, which is not natural because I've still got a bit, a bit of roots showing, but hey, yellow. Um, yeah, full like battle armor, cleric, shield, warhammer, the whole nine. Okay, uh, actually, Kane, Fallon, Colleen. Go ahead. Actually, everyone who's not Aaronin, go ahead and roll me religion. Uh, I'm, I'm so good at my intelligence checks. Do I, don't I already know what he is? Because I've been like on a ship with him for or traveling with him for like. You a came week. in different ships, actually. Uh, you guys should have had your own little two-person one-shot before the. Okay. Um, all right, so every, everybody but Maxis, actually, because this isn't, like, especially hidden. Um, you noticed, did you say you had some kind of, like, amulet thing, I believe, Aaron? Also on my shield, yes. Okay, um, and also on a Not shield. You, you notice the following design. Um, it's actually a silhouette of a pair of dancers. Um, it's mostly in black, although very noticeably... Uh, the female silhouette has sort of a red ribbon trailing from her ankle, and against her back, the, the male silhouette is holding the flat of a dagger, um, and that's sort of in silver. 
Um, and you recognize that as actually the holy symbol of Miros, who is the god of desire. Um, so in terms of alignment, he would be the chaotic neutral god. Um, all right, so these are the people in the room. Um, Mira sort of, or no, so Ethna at this point, uh, noticing Fallon. And, and so, uh, by the way, Brave, you guys have made it to the tower. You've entered sort of a command tent kind of thing. Um, you met a halfling, rather like sturdy, uh, dark-haired halfling named Teophil Greenwood. Um, also present are Nistia Cantaniel, the high priest of Ennis, um, Ethna Greensword, who you might remember, and also the one who just poked her head in is Mira Hillcrest. Um, also, rest in peace, Specs, um, episode 48 to episode 49, um, technically. Um, okay, uh, so Ethna Fallon, hearing your comment, um, oh, Actually, that's a good point. Why don't we do character descriptions all around? Uh, so, Kane, then Fallon, and Gmork, then Colleen. Why don't you guys quickly describe your characters? Well, I wasn't ready for this. Okay, then um, we'll start with Fallon, because he was the one who asked me. Sorry, I just I knew we got to hear about their good dudes, but they didn't hear about our dudes. No, it was a good point. Um, tell me all about your dude. Well, it is my Winston, dude. my dude. Well, my dudes. Uh, my dude is a, a dude. 30 uh, years old. He's uh, named Fallon Fenris. He's an art uh, ranger. And he is has a dog, a wolf named Gmork, who is black and uh, mean looking. And, <laughs> that's, uh, and that's about it. Fallon is formerly the tallest, biggest member of the party. <laughs> oh, I'm no longer. Oh, yeah, there's the Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> the eight foot Goliath, yes. He has taken your stone. God damn it. Um, I'll, right. I'll, I'll put on that. Sorry, buddy. All right. I think the only way to fix this is you take him up by the knees so he loses a couple feet. <laughs> like, we'll literally. Have to push him around in a wheelchair all his life, but just to spite him. <laughs> all right, Kane, we're on you now. So, all right. So, hold up. I'm wearing. So, Kane's just kind of like. Gymnast type build. Like kind of like thin but not lacking muscle, like kind of you know acrobatic yeah, type. Kind of wiry. Um, he has he's he has blue skin. He is like light blue skin with kind of this silvery gray hair that's kind of well kept, a bit disheveled since they've been with recent events. But um, he's in this kind of black set of leather. He has a rapier <laughs> at one side and some daggers and stuff. He's really cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's got a lot of product in his hair. Um, actually, Maxis Aaron, give me... Uh, what's it called? Arcana? Yeah, Arcana. Thank you. Why can't I remember that? I'm great at Arcana chicks, guys. Yeah, both of you recognize him actually as a genasi, so half genie, basically, uh, by his color... He would be probably the child of a a jinn or a wind genie, um, and a human. Uh, all right, and Colleen. Oh. he's very young looking. Like he probably couldn't see an arm be young. Um, Colleen is a high elf, but I'm not going to tell you where she's from because you didn't ask me. Uh, <laughs> she has pale olive skin and wears white. Or wears her hair short in a pixie cut with white hair. Her eyes are a greenish color with gold trim around her irises. And Deep she's about, pools, really. Yeah, you know. She's about 5'4 and wears a bright green noble finery. And she has a very uh, bubbly sort of demeanor to her. <laughs> All right. So now I think I'm finally going to go back. And Fallon had just made a comment about don't eat the food. Um, so Fallon, Ethna sort of looks, looks over at you and says, you think something's wrong with the food? Oh, I'll take the food, by the way. <laughs> uh, no, 
Oh, d- ignore him. He's just we're a bit delirious. Uh, I give I can't I give Ken a confused look, and I say, uh, you know, the last time somebody I know had something this one prepared, they kind of died. <laughs> pretty pretty hard death too. I'll take that risk. Food me. Let's go. Um, just a second. Uh, and with this, Mira sort of ducks out. Um, you hear, uh, like a short distance from the tent, some conversation. Um, and then Mira comes back in and looks around at all of you, uh, sort of standing while the rest of you are sitting in a, like a, not a, not quite a complete circle. Um, she says, there, the person who died is right here in gestures to Kane. Hello. There were circumstances. Did you stay dead, Kane? It was a temporary ordeal. The food is fine, and she sits <laughs> down. Yeah, you only be dead for like two weeks. <laughs> It'll hurt like <laughs> that was that all? Um, with this, Nistia's sort of raises her head a little bit and gives a, a look across at Mira and says, well, I suppose we knew what we were getting into when we invited you here. What are you talking about? This is our place. <laughs> They're like outside the tower, right? Yeah. Your place. I mean, we, we kind of have you know, permanent guest residences, I believe. I don't quite remember that being the arrangement, though you were welcome here last time. That is correct. And she just smiles. Now, perhaps we should get to business. Um, First of all, a question for the two of you. Did you not have two companions who left with you? Shit got weird. <laughs> um, around this Sorry. moment, uh, a couple halflings come in, sort of with large platters of food. Um, they put it on sort of a short table that's in the middle of the room, along with a uh, pile of plates. And it's sort of like help yourself um, at the moment. Um, there's a roast of some kind, uh, some rolls, uh, some water and wine. Um, and also some apples. All right, so I take, I'm like slicing the roast in half, stacking rolls on it, taking the jug of wine and going and sitting. Okay, about a third of the food is gone, but <laughs> happily there are halflings and people like that in the room, so you might be okay. You might have to ask for more later. Who knows? Yeah, it'll be fine. So, like, there was this really weird creepy looking creature and then which, which one Lil turned into a dragon you'll have to describe more i don't it's, i don't know it feels like it's been weeks <laughs> which one do you mean wait someone turned into a dragon what are you talking yes. about the snake people or the tentacle man the tentacle man they were, she was asking about Halil and Alistar. All right. I was so explaining. There, there was a tentacle man. A very large tentacle man. Tentacle he took man. us to a... Yes, he appeared... I don't know where... We, it was like some plain stuff going on or something. You know, some... Oh, no. Hold on. Out of character. What, what was the, <laughs> the time thing called? The ter- okay. There may have been temporals involved. <laughs> uh, she looks but, at you. Would you describe what the creature looked like to her? Fallon, would you describe what the creature looked like to the to the nice lady? No, no. I, I'm asking if you would. I'm guessing you probably don't remember the details, so I'm willing to sort of fill that in for you. But I'm asking uh, if you're purposefully hiding that or if you're telling. I I don't remember. <laughs> I was hoping I got to just say tentacle man again, but <laughs> okay. Uh, Isn't that what he was? Didn't he have like? Am I he was that? like. I can't remember. There was some. There's like teeth. He, he, remember, you know like, what? Just out of thing. curiosity, anyone who wants to describe this thing, uh, sure. Let's call it Arcana to remember what it looked like. Okay. 
Oh, but this oh. was like a few hours ago, wasn't it, for us? Yeah. It's it's a low difficulty check. I have such a high arcana bonus <laughs> and I'm terrible. Hey, look at that. <laughs> okay, so Kane Damn. describes it as a temporal. <laughs> which um, is perfect. Which means that it was like timey and jumpy and scary. Uh, it's damn temporal. Fowlin sort of mentions that it was something kind of like a spider and then Colleen sort of oh yeah steps I remember in, oh, yeah. it was a spider was steps a spider. in and describes it a bit more um again like a head kind I, of I like do a remember spiders stuff. um mostly black with sort of yellow streaks and then its arms were more like uh tentacles that terminated at the ground and like claws and actually seemed to reach through the ground it was um, everything Kane hates um, and so, as you describe this, and now I need to get out my D20. Um, well, I've got more that I want to. I remember. Okay. About the dude that's not appearance-wise, I would share. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming I he's doing this roll like after we describe before we finish. Oh no, I was just checking something on my end. Um, so, so hearing your description, uh, Nissia's eyes narrow a bit, and she says. That is not anything familiar to me. It and wasn't said, from like this plane. He was he's from nothing, he says. He's like came out of nowhere, he's the nothing bad guy. He doesn't he doesn't work right. He turned a bunch of what were those goblins? Yeah. Yeah, goblins. Suddenly we were walking through this abandoned goblin house or village then he's there and there's all these zombie goblins and these pretty plants it was really weird then he like stunned everyone but then like they'll turn into a dragon and start fighting him and then alistar did some like ice fairy something I'm not sure exactly where alistar did but it's like he a, did some stuff it's like a champion of the winter fae basically um i mean kane doesn't know this <laughs> so All our they out. fought this thing and then what happened to them they went to a different plane to where Alice to fa the fairies oh they went to the Feywild okay and then yeah I'm not sure about when they're coming back it wow. was all kind of quick and sudden and unexpected well this is Interesting. I think I might have a slight idea of what you saw. Nothing detailed, mind you. But it does change things drastically. Oh, it did want the things that you had us go out to, you no know, deal with. And I point to this, 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 this. Wait, what did you say? I don't think she. I don't want to say what the, the the like the items what they're called. The I just want to kind of. Yeah, I don't want to say that? that. Who was it? That was like go do. Yeah, that. the high priestess. No, it was. It was. But didn't she mention these things too? She she, she Ennis, told us we could go there as a way to like get rid of them. Ennis sent you out. I mean, excuse me, Nistia, uh, sent you out after Cyphera, which is the the magical looking glass. Yeah, to get rid of like, okay, no, wait. Okay, okay. So, do the so, uh, Never so mind. Fallon kind of nudges Kane and says, <laughs> "That some weird shit we saw." He, he wanted some kind of weird magical stuff. He was kind of being a jerk, and he fought us clearly. And, and I think we won, but uh, you know, we lost two people. Uh, Which is especially more disheartening now that we know Lil could turn to a dragon. That would have been very useful. <laughs> well, At any point in previous fights. Like so many times. I know. My, um, actually, let me check. Um, and Aaron, actually, go ahead and give me... Let me think about this. Uh, actually, call it religion. Eleven. Okay. Um, I, I I will just say this. 
them talking about somebody turning into a dragon sort of perks your ears up um, considering the sort of mission that you got. Um, okay. Uh, so with that, um, Nessia says, well, what, um, you said something about uh, an item that this creature wanted. Um, any more detail about that? Nope. What, what was it? Was it the looking glass? Was it Cyphera? <clears throat> magic item. We didn't get that, did we? No, you didn't. Okay. Um, Speaking did we of looking glasses, <laughs> funny story, really. Um, yeah, we don't have that. Where? Interesting. Um, but I don't. I don't think we need that anymore. So you. But this so you went out. You met this creature, and then you came back. Well, we yeah, were on see, our way back anyway. You just kind of jumped. We went in out, way. right? And you know this. You know the tower with the whole, it's all about the, the Ennis thing. Well, you know we kind of hung out with Ennis a bit, and she told us some stuff, and then we came back. You met Ennis. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. And a and a big. Ennis is pretty chill. And there was a dragon. But he was a nice and, dragon. And we had to fight another big tentacle man with Innis. Yes. And she we got pretty saved bad. Him? Well, Fallon might have saved Innis. You don't know about that. It's a bit unclear. You don't know about that. Oh, I don't know about that? You're metagaming. You, you, you didn't you brag about bit. that? I feel like we would have bragged about this. No, I don't think you did. I totally saved a god. I'm pretty sure no. you did. No? Okay. Fal Fallon's holding that one close to the chest, my friend. All right. All right. Well, we might have, we also fought with Ennis to get some other tentacle stuff, but it was different tentacle stuff, I think. Um, I don't even know where you're going with this anymore. There are so many questions I could ask, but let me ask this one. Did something happen to her? To she Ennis? did get like really tired because that tentacle thing was she, she very rude. She fought this big evil tentacle monster. It, she was out for a while. And then she, she was got out of commission for a bit. And it seems like she's going to need some recharge time. Yeah, she's not 100% right now. Um, and at this point, Nistia kind of looks around to the room, and a lot of knowing nods are exchanged. Um, and Ethna looks back at uh, the three of you and says, The priests of Innis currently are unable to cast spells or use their divine <laughs> power in any way. And I think you may have just answered things for us. That's gotta suck. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm sorry about that. But, you know, it, I, th I think she'll get better. It's just, uh, yeah, that was tough. Well, how many days ago did this happen? This is still Ethna talking. Um... I don't know, DM, how many days ago in <laughs> game did this ago. happen? I've been tracking. Four days. Yeah. Four, four days. Yeah. Four days ago. Four whole days. Totally not like three months. It's been 10,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it has been a pretty long, long, long years ago. four days in terms of It has of been so long. Time. Uh, but they were some pretty dense days. Um, they were pretty dense. Like, you know, time flies when you hang out with gods and dragons. Um, you know, we, 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 I, I turned to Kane. You know, we still have those mirrors. We're supposed to take them back, and we, we probably know, need these, to do that. These were these were Tarvis mirrors, weren't they? I don't want to make him angry. I'm just gonna leave it on you. Tarvis. Um, just let me see if I can use the name. No, is anybody else? Is he just an oh, ancient actually, gold dragon? Oh, actually, actually, uh, yeah, yeah, ancient gold dragon. Um. Actually, Mira, of all people, um, you see uh, her eyebrows shoot up, and she says, Tavrith the Ancient Dragon. Yeah, he was pretty Lead stern. by the sea, uh, yeah. We may have, I may have gotten off on the wrong foot with him, but, you know, chill dude likes being a dwarf. You would get off on the wrong foot with him, wouldn't you, Kane? 
But you're didn't still know, here. Yeah, I didn't know it was Tavrith. He was a dwarf, and I asked him about the dragon's horde, not knowing it, I was asking the dragon about the dragon's horde. So, you know, how that goes. Kane, sometimes it amazes me that you're still alive, and she winks. Ah, that's, <laughs> that's a great joke. You're so funny. At any rate, um, and at this point, um, Teofil, the the halfling from before, comes back in, sees the remnants of the food on the table, shrugs, uh, grabs himself some scraps, and sits down. Um, and Ethna glances over at him and says, We figured out what happened to the priests. He says, Oh? And he says, Yeah, these ones say something happened to Innis. And he stops uh, with a roll like most of the way to his mouth and says Innes is here yeah she's sleeping right now though she's pretty pretty out pretty out of it with, after the, her, the fight Teofil looks over at Mistia and says do I need to know the details she shrugs no. and says probably not to be honest, I wasn't 100% on the details, but I have some idea from what these ones have been saying. I am a great storyteller. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Teofil says, does it change what we're here to do? Um, she shrugs and says, probably not. We can't count on her being in shape particularly soon, it would seem. What are you here to do? And did you need priests for it? Teofil says, we're here to help the priests. There's, as you can imagine, a great deal of valuable knowledge, items, and people here at the tower. The, the Tower of Knowledge? Something like that. Oh, the shocker. The priesthood of Innis is among the, well, is the most powerful in our country and considering the situation with the demons and the goblins we thought that we should do what we can to protect what's here given the situation so we were just um discussing a few options for how to do that um, suffice to say, I was up in the north of the Halfling Territory um, when the demons rolled through. Um, actually, do we... yes, we'll tell them about that too. Um, something you should know. So the demons made their way west from, and I always get these names mixed up, it's Siren, right? Yeah, um, from Siren. Still aren't quite sure how they got there. Um, <coughs> Get some of that water. Nistia says, um, cursed artifacts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and Fallon, Fallon slowly turns and looks at Kane like... Kane looks <laughs> in an opposite direction for everyone. Sipping his water. Anyways, we were making a go at holding them off there when the Dragonborn suddenly pulled back into their own territory. Suffice to say, it would seem that they have abandoned the common defense and are focused on their own territories. And with that, Overwatch was basically overrun. And yes, I named them after Blizzard games. I kind of wish I hadn't at this point, but the die is cast. Um, so anyways, my unit can operate a little independently. So most of the halflings are currently engaged in trying to survive, but we're here attending to the larger picture, if you will. I, um... Well, Ethna, <coughs> right. Um, we sprung into action as soon as we realized what was going on, made contact with Mira, who offered some amount of aid, and also made contact with Teofil near Westris. Um, and Mira says, right, so some of us are here as well. We also brought along a wizard with whom I've done some business in the past. 
Um, he knows the sequence for the teleportation circle at, at Citadel. Um, so we were thinking of evacuating there. Um, and again, conversation is sort of continuing around in a circle. Um, Nistia, I'm not 100% sure how um, comfortable I feel about Citadel. I was considering um, trying to sail up to Dazain, which is actually the, uh, the sort of dwarf um, capital. Don't get a world map, friend. Yeah, so Nistia is talking about potentially um, sailing all the way up here. Let me zoom my map out a little bit. Come on. There we go. Uh, I'm talking about making our way all the way up here, which is quite a journey. Um, but uh, putting in that um, there's an old agreement between us and the dwarves um, that I believe could secure most that needs securing. Um, and Teofil says, and honestly, all that I'm really concerned about is handling this as efficiently as possible and getting back to the fight um, back near Overwatch. And, uh, Ethna, and Ethna jumps in at this point and says, don't forget there's another army in Jurdine. Right, right. Um, and they sort of all trail off at this moment. Um, there's sort of a pregnant pause. And then Ethna says, so, when we saw you coming in, we thought um, maybe you could add some perspective on the situation. Shit's fucked, man. <laughs> and then Nistia says, honestly, hearing that Innes is here. Where did you meet Innes anyway? You said... Oh, at Tarvitz place. The, the peak? Yeah, yeah. Could you get back there? Probably not. Yeah, it was kind of rough. If you wanted us to, sure. I mean, I, no. <laughs> Pretty rough. Hearing that Innes is actually here, and what's more, in some kind of trouble, makes me want to help if I can, but uh, you would know better uh, than me. I, I think last time we what? checked on it, everything being done could be done. What, what Ennis needs is just your prayers. I suppose. Well, well, Ethna says, given all that, any thoughts? Um, as I said, I was coming here proposing that we move things to Citadel. King Steeltree has graciously offered to help store them, although that is obviously not particularly far from danger itself. So there's an army in Jordan, and you want to go to Dazoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced uh, Dazine. How's Tindox doing? Design. <laughs> um, let me think, actually. Uh, Mira actually answers that. There was an army there, but um, it got confused, shall we say. And um, they managed to hold it off. It got confused? The goblins were noticed turning and attacking the demons. Interesting. At least some of them. Out of character. So, Casey, uh, what was my last message? Your last message... Um, you said, checking in, how are things? Are you still good? You heard back, we're okay. City got attacked, but we came through. What are you doing? Your last messages made no sense. Um, you said... Is the city okay? Are the Loreas okay? My last message was accurate. Near Tower of Venice, can't say more. And that was today. So. Okay, so I can't say more. Okay. Back to you, Fallon. Oh, wait, you've got to say something. So, uh, yeah, I was going to say, was the last thing 
um, they asked was for our perspective. That was it. Yeah, they're right. just basically saying, you've obviously seen some shit. We're kind of talking around in circles here. Do you have any input? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, okay, I'll give you the real scoop, okay? There's <laughs> some magical artifacts we have to keep them away from. And we're starting to do a good job, but there's some left, and so we need to try to find them. <laughs> I'm more down for that than this whole baby shit bullshit that we've been doing. Mira says, what kind of magical artifacts? <clears throat> Ones you can't have. Well, fine then. <laughs> she glances over um, at Ethna. Ethna sort of sighs and says, would it be possible to elaborate? I kind of look at Fallon, like... I look at Kane and I point to Mira, and I don't care who hears me. I, say, I don't really trust that one. <laughs> Mira rolls her eyes and says, I'll I leave. mean, how, how much do you trust your your friend? Um, I'm forgetting all the names, hold on. I don't really know any of these people, Kane. <laughs> Tirsa. Um, uh, I don't. That's a whisper, by the way. I don't want the whole room hearing me. You're, like, getting super close to Mira and whispering that? No, to Fallon. Oh. Talk, and I was like, how much do you trust your friend Tirsa? <clears throat> I haven't talked to her in a while. Probably not much. Um. So, so Nistia sort of looks at Mira. She stands up and sighs and says... Honestly, you have as much stake here as the rest of us, but it might help. Mira says, I'm gone, I'm gone. She waves her hand in the air and steps outside of the tent. Um, and you listen in silence for a moment. You hear footsteps sort of disappear away. Um, so I, I hold up my hand and I turn my, I have my ring turned in and I turn it out and I show my hand and I say, Recognize that. Uh, who are you asking? Uh, Nistia and uh, what's her name? Uh, Ethna. Ethnically. Okay. Um, Ethna sort of looks at it and shakes her head, but then um, Nistia looks at it and says, That's one of the rings of the cultists of Alkadir. <laughs> <laughs> calm down, calm down. I, I don't know where I got it. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're looking for his uh, vestiges. Interesting. How is that supposed to help the situation? And it has told us to do it. Yeah, so there. Okay. Um, <laughs> Apparently, have you found if any? we are. Uh, yes, we A have. couple. Jesus, okay. <laughs> <laughs> A simple yes would suffice. So, two, three, two, then? <laughs> Why do you need to know exactly how many? Uh, she shrugs. I'm trying to be helpful here. I, I think, you know, I think you can do you know what they the are? priestess of Let's ask her. I'm asking if she knows what they are. Uh, she, she rat, um, actually, wait a minute. Let me... Uh, you, you see her sort of close her eyes and think for a moment, and then she opens them. Yes. <clears throat> okay, well. Um... I made an extra remember how many. We have two, right? But they had a couple already, or something. You do have two, indeed. Didn't Tom yeah, we... have a bunch of stuff in like a room? He did. That doesn't mean. Read messages. Read something else entirely. Why the hell would Tarith have some of them hidden yeah, in a room? Some, he had like pieces of like some like dragon stuff. Like I wasn't there, shit. so I wasn't. He's an ancient gold dragon. He's got treasure. That's what they do. Yeah, you're just going off on tangent. Okay, then. Who was it that said that they knew what the vestiges were? 
Uh, that was Mystia, um, the high priestess. I would look at her and be just be like, well, you want to share with the class? What are <laughs> fucking things are there? Nice. She looks around and says, I suppose there's no harm in it. The vestiges of Alkadir are very powerful magical artifacts created by the god of domination himself. Long, long ago, um, before the well, the second ancient war. Um, at any rate, those items are the Amulet of Foresight, the Axe of Sundering, the Cape of Delusion, the Chalice of Prosperity, the Crown of Allure, the Gauntlet of Suffusion, and the Scepter of Command. So, there are all the names of them. Um, as for what exactly they... What? Those don't sound dangerous at all. Oh, yeah. It sounds no. like a lot of fun. I'd, I'd dibs on the axe if there was one of their room. Is that in the tower? What's in the tower? Uh, she looks over at you, Maxis, and says, slightly concerned about that reaction, and small smile curls up at the corner of her mouth. The... Vestiges of Alcadir are nothing to be treated lightly. Uh, Fallon kind of looks at Nessie and he's like, yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah, know, yeah, wait I a minute. I expect it to be light at all. I expect it to be very heavy, actually. F Fallon looks at Nessie and says, wait, wait a minute. Uh, who, who the hell are these two people? Because <laughs> we haven't been introduced, right? We're just sitting there hanging out. Um, I, I was imagining that when you were like describing your characters and such, there probably would have been like greetings exchanged. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, but, if you wanna, oh, hi, 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 yeah. but if you want to question why they're there, that might not be something that you know. Uh, I'd be like, uh, yeah, why, why, who are these? Why are these people here? Uh, she looks over at uh, Teofil and says scrapped up whatever help I could in order to um, help with the situation down here. We didn't quite know what we were going to find. Um, he gestures over at Maxis. This one is from a hunter's guild that an old acquaintance of mine is the head of. Um, and this one, he gestures towards Ernan. Actually, I, I never did quite get the story of how you got looped into this. Um, and then, I don't know what you mean. And then Ethna pops up, pops in, and says, "He was supplied by the Temple of Miros in Dale's Harbor, um, as their aid." But what are their special qualifications? <laughs> Ethna looks at you, Kane, and says, "I'm sorry. Are you recruiting?" Always. Okay. Um, and Fallon looks at Kane like, okay. <laughs> he, uh, she points at Aaronin. He's a cleric of Miros. She points at Maxis. <laughs> He's large and terrifying. Good enough? Uh, Fallon leans over to Brave and is like, have you ever had like a Goliath zombie? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> What's you just call me? <laughs> Run oh, Maxis. What did I call you? I said this should have been Colleen. Sorry. Did I say brave? What did, did I say? Oh. Uh, to Colleen then, my bad. Run from Metal Lord. But oh, really. I mean, <laughs> I'm blue. Just naming physical qualities. I said special qualifications. You know? What's your experience? Uh, it's, it's not really time for that. I would say not, says Ethna. So here's the deal. We've got two. We need more. Apparently, you know, it's like puzzle pieces. Um. Well, Nistia says, I honestly don't know where any of the vestiges are. It's kind of one of those lost time things. And did we have a did we have a, a lead on a third one? Nope. I can't remember. No, you did not. We had no leads. <laughs> Why you gotta be so? <laughs> so, I couldn't find this thing, right? Because I have to know the object. Like, knowing its name wouldn't help me. Correct. Yeah, just knowing about it. Well, and actually, you can only find, like, 
creatures, not what do you? Objects. Oh, you, okay. You have like a you've got a spell for it. You, is that what you mean? No, I have a compass that leads me to whatever I, anyone that I've met before. You got a Jack Sparrow compass. What you're saying? Eh, not exactly, but kind of. It's like Man, scrying, don't you know? don't sh don't show that to King. So. So that's what we were about, is finding these, but it sounds like there's, you know, just demons about. Well, says Nistia, um, if we were better equipped, I could try to help you. As it is, I mean, you could try to search through the records that we have in the tower. I wouldn't, I mean, I could, I suppose, make some guesses as to where to start, but it's nothing I've really been paying attention for in the past. Um, Ethna uh, says we've got some records in Citadel as well that might help. Um, and then Nistia says, and um, actually the, the dwarves at Dazine might be able to help as well. So, so um, what you're saying is we have options for where to go for research. Well, we're already at the tower. But they are a bunch of priests, and right now they're kind of useless without their spells. So they do have a lot uh, of books. Could, could still us. turn pages, and right? The books and still work. They could turn the pages for us, and we could go somewhere else. They, they could, could use their mind. Right. To build the tower to is the page. tower itself important, or it's just the people inside it? Because if there's a bunch of demons rampaging, and I don't know if you all have been followed by demons or if anyone are coming this way, this is not at all a defensible place. Like, not for an extended period. Anyway. Uh, Nistia looks at you, Maxis, and says, Under normal circumstances, it's a lot more defensible than you'd think. Um, with things as they are at present, we can... They can do magic. We can certainly put up probably more resistance than you'd think, but I share your concern. What's going on, man? Don't uh, appreciate the magic shit. Fallon says, oh... Also, I don't know if we talked about this last time, but we found out about some agents of a shawl hiding in in uh, Einengrun. A shawl? Um, and everyone in the room looks back and forth at each other like a shawl. What's in a shawl? Do you know what a shawl is? Oh, they they're from off the continent. Yeah, they're they're kind of working, I think, with the demons. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm bringing it up. They're um, also they're also looking for they? these items. So, uh, yeah, at this point, it's, it's... Teofil says, you're saying there are puppet masters behind the demon army. Well, not, I wouldn't say necessarily... It sounded like they're, they're partners in it's a like joint a, venture. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a mutual, mutually beneficial relationship they have. So, let me get this straight. One may be fiduciary to the other, but who can say? Yeah, These... isn't the show like helping them get into this plane or something? Yep, yep. Uh, yes, that is what you figured out. Yeah. Um, well, actually, they're 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 kind of helping each other. Um, yeah. So what you figured out was that the Ashal are basically powerful. A lot of them are powerful spellcasters, and they're able to open the paths. Um, but the path that they found to Anangrun went actually uh, through the abyss. Um, so they made the deal with the demons. Um, so Teofil, um at this point says, so let me get this straight. The demons get let loose to do demony things, and these Ashal get what? Access to Einengrun. And so that they can also hunt for these vestiges, uh, vestiges of Alkadir. And I have I remembered the names. I wrote uh, those down too. I mean I remember two the two of them. one of them was Ertazun said Adon. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a fella named he was a he was a dragonborn red guy there's a, a gary on little tricky human guy and then the ones we haven't met are ursiel sent thrindar the barbarian uh malloy elder branch and vano dimim and i there was something about that elder branch what was it like we heard about her uh I'm not actually sure what you heard, so I can't remind you. Basically, we had we got a lead on her. I just can't remember what it was. Yeah, I 
Just keep telling us stuff until it jogs your memory. I think that's the spelling. I might have spelled it wrong. Um, I'm definitely missing. There are some accents on some of that, actually. actually let uh, me... If you want me to copy and paste the names, I can. Well, I was just doing it for the benefit of the other people in the room uh, who aren't previously familiar with these names. And uh, the first one is actually accented thusly. So Jackson's. And, Say that as if and, I have and, any and idea how to that with actually, accents. Last one is actually this. <gasps> actually, I put I put Vano too. <laughs> um, huh. Vano sounds way better. I think you might um, have typed in. I don't know if you actually got Garion's last name, but I'll go ahead and give it to you anyway. So those are the names of the Ashal that you know. Um, oh, so, we got the Gary um, part as a lock wall. Thanks. So didn't didn't we bring them to the tower? Aren't those the two guys they held as prisoners? But yeah. then we had the the temples attacked, and so then we did, we didn't end up doing that. Um, yeah. Also, we had we had actually captured uh, the the dragon guy and Gary and brought him here, but then there was a time shift, and we we're in a different time thing now where that did not happen. Oh yes. I had taken a, a cloak off of one of them, and it's gone. And says, no, it's... are you okay? No, see... no who, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who gave us the time gem? Uh, that was... He was, in the, he was in the tower. Yeah, he was like a gnome who was in the tower, who I gave a really unfortunate name. Um, what? Oh, I almost remember the name. Damn it. Because he said name? that. Uh, it was something, because we were making a joke, and it turned yeah, into his name. Because his name sounds like, oh, that's right. His name is this. <laughs> Urin, that's right. Well, there, was a, there was a gnome here named Urin, and he gave his stones to be able to track Urin a lot of trouble. times. Urin gave you and, stones? Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, and, uh, and I have mine, and it was... What color do I have it listed as now? It was green, and now it's blue. So Wait, I think that means um, some things Fell happened. Um, looks over at Nestia and says... Can we fetch this one to verify what he's saying? And she nods. She gets up, um, steps outside. So real quick to everyone, another day, thing into the gap for our temples. I love they, that no one likes to believe my legs. story, but I'm I'm the one who met your god and fought with her in battle, saved her life. No big deal. And then here we are. <laughs> there are these four-legged creatures that are like inside. They look very similar to turtles. Um. Nistia finishes giving directions to somebody outside outside the tent and then comes back in. Um, he's being fetched. In the meantime, she glances over at Teofil and says, I actually have reasons to believe these ones. Um, Fallon, can you show me the stone? I flick it in the air towards her. Okay. Um, yeah, she catches it. And looks at it and says, <laughs> well, I can't be positive because it's tied to you. But my understanding of how he makes these things is that, um, yeah, something's happened. And she tosses it back. Um, actually, make a check. she tosses it back reasonably, you know, accurately as well. Um... And just because we're having fun with this. Um, actually, uh, give me sleight of hand. I know for everyone watching at home, some people are really strict on sleight of hand. Only use it for like Heidi stuff, but I just go ahead and use it for hand dexterity. Okay, yeah, you catch it. Um, so TFL sort of, you know, puts his forehead in his hand and says, all right, so... You're telling me that you captured a couple of these Ashal, whoever they are, brought them here, but then something happened, and so you didn't. Did you Temples. learn anything about them while you had them? Right. I, I, I told you the names of the comrades who are hiding here, and I guess those two are somewhere else now. And I also, we also, uh, from that, cat guy that just got hauled off uh he told us that uh they they can cast magic at any range uh 
um, a pregnant pause, and then... <laughs> and Fal Fallon, after, after the pregnant pause, goes, yeah, oh no. <laughs> and then Nistia says, mind you, I don't know exactly how the vestiges work, but the connection seems fairly clear. Are you saying they have the gauntlet? If that's what a gauntlet does, uh, I don't really... Do you know what the word suffusion means? I'm, I'm rolling a Google check. <laughs> of course! <laughs> I know what suffusion means. Suffusion is when something slowly spreads throughout something else. Like a feeling of color, the suffusion of red into your friend's cheeks will slowly show that she's embarrassed, for example. Oh, man. I was hoping I'd roll in the load to emphasize how I don't know what suffusion means. So again, I don't have... I have less knowledge about the vestiges than you'd think, but my understanding of the lore and of just simply the name is consistent with something that allows one to spell cast at extreme range. That must be the one. Have you ever observed them doing this in Anon Uh Not personally. I don't think so. Well, unless they I'm... bring the gauntlet here, there's a chance we might be isolated. Ah, yeah, maybe. That, I mean, that, that cat was stupid for... Yeah, no, yeah, cat. no, that, that, makes, that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. Okay, well, certainly... It'd be nice if they be concerned about. It. Um, Maybe we should ask the cat. I believe he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the the cat is currently the Kung Pao chicken. Um, no, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, it tastes funny. I'm not sure whether I actually want to revoke that being canon or not. Um, <laughs> make it canon, just do just it. to make my life easier. Um, but it'd actually make my life harder if um, the the people who are here are cold blooded murderers of innocent sentient beings, mostly innocent. Um, and plus, you'd have to like somehow make Kung Pao Chicken like canon in your world, which yes. is a whole, whole different mess. That's fair. Um, <laughs> okay. So, um, at about this point, um, gosh, my, my, my sister actually recommended a different way to pronounce this guy's name, but I forget how it goes. So, we're just sticking with urine. Um, he, uh, he comes in and says, Is it Urine? <laughs> urine? I don't know. Urine. Uh, Anyways, he comes in and says, I was summoned to look at a stone. Hey, do you remember yes, me? Yes, Fallon's blue ball. Yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> do you remember giving me this, this nifty little color-changing rock? Yes. Um, he, you see him uh, sort of spin it around and say, oh, there we go. Um, he pulls a small lens out of his coat and looks at it. He says, yep, this one was definitely green when I made it. Congratulations. I don't know what's different about us versus where you were before, but you are now existing in a different reality than when I gave you this. Is there a prize for that? Unfortunately not, except that oh, it's did, kind did, of did... cool and potentially disturbing. Did we learn about the whole, like, we were all going to die, mm -hmm. uh, except we got saved somehow? Except there was another time shift earlier in the future, one that happened to Nistia, or earlier in the past. Yeah, and, yeah, you guys learned a bit about Cain that he didn't want you to learn about. I don't Nistia remember is, all that, so I don't um, know if I can relate it that well, just because I remember... Is... Uh, you would be able to sort of uh, start indicating some of it, and then Nistia okay. would sort of well, start I'll, nodding. I'll, st I'll start, and I'll say, well, apparently, actually, I'm starting to remember we were all supposed to die, <laughs> but we I didn't. Wasn't, but uh, that's a different thing. Yeah, I did mention that, says Nistia. I, well, it might be relevant to our current situation, but probably not that fact specifically. Um, suffice to say, what you said about that creature is giving me a thought. We, there might be something else going on besides demons here. Um, she looks around at all of you and says, Do you know the story of the Sons of Kowal? 
not to be confused, bro. There we go. Would you be surprised if I said no? Maybe. No, I would not. Sure um, there. Allow me to down. elaborate. Um, and actually, you know what? Let me. I know things. You know things? Who knows things? I rolled 25. I know things. <laughs> oh, uh, rolling a 25 doesn't give you this. But it's a story. That's like history. <laughs> eh, it's not even the right check, and I didn't ask you to make it, so. Eh. I tried. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you went over this at the beginning, great gosh. Yeah, let's go ahead and play this. Um, so Nistia um, sort of leans back and closes her eyes and then starts to very clearly um, recite some kind of, like, legend. In the beginning, there was only my heir. To look back beyond my heir is to invite insanity. My heir was lonely, infinitely lonely. There was only my heir and nothing, not blackness, not emptiness, nothing. And so my air splintered. From the shards of my air were born nine planes, and from the reverberations of my air's cry, the gods. The planes were not then as now distinguished among the material and the spiritual. Rather, each plane encompassed all existence in all its forms, and each intersected all the others materially and spiritually. The gods took freely of this form and material of the planes, and from it sculpted countless worlds. And then came the cataclysm. To look beyond my air is to invite insanity, but to look beyond my air is not to do the impossible. For my air, in my air's isolation, was not alone. In the beginning, there was only Kowal. To look beyond Kual is to do the impossible. Kual was proud, infinitely proud. But there was only Kual and nothing. And yet Kual reached beyond the nothing to grasp hold and to annihilate. Defying logic itself, Kual dissolved, dissolved into countless unspeakable forms. Kual exploded, imploded. Wall cast his reach beyond existence and invaded. And she opens her eyes and says, My heir is, if you will, the one god, the ground of all existence, the source of the nine gods that we know. Kowal is the ground of non-existence, of annihilation, of non-being. His children long ago sought to achieve some sort of existence in, well, what could only loosely be called a battle, but let's call it one. I don't know what happened in that battle. It's not exactly the sort of thing that's been recorded, except that, well, obviously we're all here, so Kowal and his children must not have won. But what you told me about this creature, a creature of the nothing, certainly sounds like that. And so it sounds like we're fighting a war on multiple fronts, both against these Ashal, against the demons that they've brought here, but also against the most ancient enemy of all, trying to steal existence itself. If that sounds vague and confusing, then that's because it is, but that's the best I can explain it. She shakes her head, sits up, gives sort of a weak smile around the room, and says, <coughs> Any questions? Just 
So we're fighting these. So that thing was like a was Kowal or like um Kowal's minion. Call him his son. Probably has the same relation to Kowal as the gods do to Maier. Um, so he fought like a a, a, a non god, an opposite. Yes, That's a reasonable way of describing it, I think, I mean, based on what you're saying. Like a negative god. Change it sits back down. Um, trying to think about how the vestiges could come into this. Uh, well, you... I think that mostly to stop the Alkadir guys. And I think if you can stop the Alkadir guys, it'll help us stop demons and stuff. Are the Ashal associated with Alkadir? Or no. Ashal no. Okay. Okay, no. guys. No. Because they're the ones that the demons in, right? But they have nothing to do with Big Papa Alkadir. We just... Well, I'm just... Okay. You said that Innis told you to seek the vestiges, right? Did she tell you to look for anything else? Uh, I feel like there was more stuff we were supposed to get. As a matter of fact, there were more things. Um, she mentioned, Sorry. I was trying to remind us of something. She mentioned the should've. three creation stones and the five dragon spirits. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that wasn't oh, that. Yeah. Didn't didn't Tarvith already have some dragon spirits or something? Well, like, no. somebody he, he measured all of us. That's what I was talking about. Well, that was what's his name, right? Oh, yeah, what do we do about that? What's her name? <laughs> you know, I, mean, I, I, I remember. Right, right. Well, of... we're supposed to get some creation stones. We may have one or two. I don't know. And we we're also supposed to get some dragon spirits, and we kind of know where two of them are. Well, we'll come to that in a moment, but to be honest, it makes sense. The <laughs> I'm glad it does to someone. Yeah, I, I can explain. The, the creation stones are, if you will, the locus of the power of the good gods, um, of Avit, of Haval, and Zephi. The five dragon spirits are the locus of power of the neutral gods, of Karulo, Innis and Miros. And as much as they are called the vestiges of Alkadir, actually all three of the evil gods play into their history and creation. Um, Alkadir is just, if you will, more publicly associated with them. Um, so my understanding is if you had all of those things, which mind you is quite the list, but you would have the most concentrated power of every god there is, which, to be honest, I don't know what that would do, but it seems like it would do something. Well, I mean, even if we don't necessarily want to condense all that in one location like we were discussing, it's probably a good idea to make sure that the demons and goblins and all those motherfuckers don't get all that shit, right? True, but... Especially if it sounds like we've already acquired a few of them. Um, I don't know. You, got, that they... you guys keep saying we a whole lot. We loosely. Um, <laughs> you. I. I, I do feel like these are somewhat competing aims, unless you actually intend to use any of them in the fight. I mean, they are, are pretty useful. What do you mean, competing aims? As in, you can seek for these artifacts, or you can help deal with the immediate problem, and those two goals may not go completely you... hand in hand. And in fact, we're out. like three okay, people. <laughs> I don't think we're going to turn the tide in a normal fight no no i think we should get all this stuff and make like a super powerful artifact out of them i will try you can use it i just want my like, zold i mean take even... out the demons and the ashal 
even from what you just said, the, if they do collect all of those things, then three people could make a hell of a... I mean, In Innis told you to find all these things. Did she say what to do with them? Yeah, we, 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 we have a place. She said I had to use them. <laughs> Shut up, Kane. She <laughs> we have a place to uh, collect them for a ritual. Oh. Or that. That was the alternative, but right? the primary plan was, was I would use them. Am I, am, I, am I talking right, Casey? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Taverth actually showed you the, the chamber. It was, like, behind his hideout, basically. Yeah, when we put a couple pieces in the right places, different fires lit up crazy. So clearly it's meant to do something that I think will either, you know, evict the demons uh, and their friends or, you know. I see. Um, well. I, I don't think Innis and, and Tavros would be steering us wrong here. So at this point, um, Teofil pipes up and says, so... Let me summarize this for everyone in the room. Sounds like you all have got your own errand. We're... We can do what we want managing the situation here. But if we can help you figure out where to look for shit, then that'd be great. Is that about the shape of it? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, if we can help with the fight here and there along the way, great. But I think this is kind of main objective. I can sneak up and stab people really good. Let me just ask this one more question. Do you know what the Ashal, whoever these people are, do you know where they're from? Do you know what they're after? Do you know anything else about them? They are from... Gavala. Suppose we can probably I pointed ask Carlin, what that he that said. Friend. I'm just gonna let Fallon take the do, lead. Do you know what they're the after? Uh, they want the vestiges of Al Qadir. They probably want to get. Uh, basically, people from the outside cannot come into Arnengrun, and I think they, uh, you know, open up a nice through way for travel, so that they can come here and do as they please. Okay, so working theory, they're doing their own thing. The demons are here first of all because that's how they got here and second of all as a smoke screen does that line up uh you know maybe i didn't i don't really know what the demons are about i think that they, they the wanted the vestiges and i think the demons were just kind of like they had to go through the abyss to get here so it was kind of a opportune deal they made with them Right, right, right. And he shrugs, look, I don't know much about demons, but I know that they don't need an excuse to smash and kill things, so. But couldn't they not, like, like they open a big old portal that lets them through, right? Like, they, you couldn't get this big demons at once. And I thought the Ashal was what let that happen. Who says to say that the portal's closed? I don't know anything about the portal. I don't know anyone who's seen it. Uh, Nistia says, anyone who could open a pathway between the dimensions like this, given enough time, could open more. So, safe to say that we don't know quite how big of an army we're dealing with, but we have our work cut out for us. Um, in the meantime, she looks at, uh, so she looks at you guys and says, well, Sounds like the best we can do to support you is, first of all, put some people to rifling through our archives to see if there's any way we can help you find the things that you're looking for. Um, other than that, I mean, if you wanted to travel somewhere that lined up with what we're doing, I'm sure that could be arranged. Um, Otherwise, it sounds like where's, we go our separate ways from here. Where's that teleporter guy going? Um, uh, Ethna says, We hadn't quite decided yet, that's what we were discussing, but he can open a connection to most of the major cities in Anangrun. Well, um, we could go with the teleporter guy to the Dwarfy place, and then, like, if, if that's a bust, he could teleport us to the 
Citadel. Uh, Ethna smiles weakly and says, The dwarves of Dazain don't... didn't want a circle in their city. They are the classic... The we are dwarves, we do our own thing, sort. Do you we... need a circle in both locations? There's a permanent circle. Um, but the spell works by connecting to a permanent circle at a different location. If there's not a permanent circle, it doesn't work. He physically goes with us to the dwarf city, and then teleports us from the dwarf city to the citadel. That would work. Um, it would require a ship. Aren't you guys, weren't you talking about going to the Dwarf City anyway? It was one of the options. To be honest, it was never my favorite. Uh, we could <laughs> teleport you do it. to Otbine, which is not that far. Although that territory is currently under threat. Do you have a map we can look at? <laughs> yes. You took the map away, can you see? <laughs> Spreads map on table. So, um... Which has so more again, you're currently expensive. at the bottom. Otvine is here. And the journey to Dazine is pretty far. Um, it's about 100 miles. So, like, which has a more expansive library? The Dwarf Place or the Citadel? I mean, Ethna says, to be honest, Citadel is the largest city in the human territory. There's a pretty good chance we'd have what you're looking for. And also, Fallon, um, give me a straight intelligence check. Okay. You remember something from the conversation with your mother. Um, she mentioned that she infiltrated the, um, the, the court in Citadel and used some sort of uh, records that they had there to research where she could find the crown. Um, and that's also where she stole the, uh, the ring from that you have. Uh, so Fallon will then pipe up and say, I think maybe the Citadel is our first stop. Do the Citadel then. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, um, Nistia says, is there anything we can do for you here? I know there's... Read all the books. I would love to peruse the Library of Venice. <laughs> okay, um, well, and she looks over at Ethna. We could rest here. And we says, are kind of... I think that Mira has been away long enough. And uh, Ethna nods and uh, leaves to go fetch her. Um, Nistia then looks at TFL and then at the rest of you and says, you know, um, I'm a bit concerned about a few aspects, but it always was the easiest option. Um, perhaps a few of us should go to Citadel with you, maybe take a few select items. Um, and she looks at TFL and says, you're free to take whatever of my priests choose not to remain here um, with you. If there are any volunteers to join the resistance, then hopefully the situation will be temporary. Um, and then uh, Maxis and Aaronin, she looks at you and says, at the point that we get everything, um, uh, actually, I'm sorry. Um, before I go on, uh, Kane, can you please jump over to Casey's office with me? I'm sorry, he just asked me something in a whisper that I need to answer right away. Repetisar was the the uh, dragonborn that you killed pre-campaign, but then when you were in uh, Vixeth, you found a book that listed him as actually a Yuan T agent. So like the real Repetisar had been killed and replaced with a uh, Yuan Ti, who presumably got some pretty serious cosmetics in order to masquerade as a dragonborn. I mean, I guess not as serious as, you know, a non scaly person, but yeah. Yeah. All right. All good? Okay, cool. All right. We're back. Um, 
So let me think, where was I? Uh, oh yeah, she she looks, Nistia looks at um, Maxis and Aranen and says, as for the two of you, um, I would definitely, I would certainly appreciate your help in um, moving some things. Um, aside from that, assuming that we don't get attacked or anything like that, um, I would say you're free to go your way. Um, she looks at the other three and says, I don't know, I know that your group has recently lost a few. Um, Maxis Aranen, perhaps one thing to consider. Um, it certainly sounds like a little more fun over there. So, sure, why not? We have so much fun. I mean, if you like tentacles and spiders and snakes and shit, but yeah. That's all right. I mean, honestly, it's like a list of my favorite things. Also, <laughs> it's this or I walk back through the forest, which isn't that big of a deal, but it is irritating, especially with all the shenanigans going on in it right now. I'm sure we'd give you a ship. Um, and then give she... one person a ship? <laughs> there would be others. There will be others having to take the ship as well. The teleportation circle can only move so much at a time. Not everybody is going to take it out of here. Um, oh, one thing that almost slipped my mind. Um, and actually, I have to check my sheet. Um, do. do, do. Where to put this? Where to put this? Did I not put it? Oh, okay. Um, she, uh, so Kane, uh, Fallon, and Colleen. Um, she says, So I know you didn't get what I sent you out for, but I did say that I would um, try to repay the time that you took on the errand I sent you on. Um, so she tosses each of you in turn a small pouch um, that has 20 platinum in it. 20. Uh, so not Maxis and Aaron, the other three. Oh. I'm encumbered. Uh, and I say, I say to, uh, <laughs> to her, I say, well, to be honest, I'm pretty sure you don't want to have it anyway. You just throw this pouch at Kane, and he just falls to the ground. <laughs> oh, God. He catches oh, I, it one-handed. I, 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 I can totally care for you. Yeah. That's I'm funny. Fallon like uh, uh, Fal Fal leans really? over to Aaron and says, I probably wouldn't uh, offer to carry Kane's money for him. Why not? It doesn't take much for him to use them daggers. Hey now, hey now. I don't. If, if you're at the party, I don't do anything bad to you. Unlike some other people, kind of looking clean a bit. What did Colleen do? She totally like drugged me or something. I think one day. I drugged you. This is no, like she like hit a hold of man. No, like she lost a card game. I didn't and lose she, that. Like, that cast a spell. The sleep. <laughs> Were you in the party? Yeah, she like cast sleep on you or something. I think. All right, I'm in. Yeah, that was way back when, though. You guys actually get along better than that these days. Well, remember when we were in that, that uh, like, wild elf camp in the woods? Yes. I, I mean, yes. you both did shit to me, but... Yeah, we had to we had to knock you out so we could not have you disrupt what we were trying to do. That was fun. Did you fed me drugs while I was poisoned, which would be die faster, but... Yeah, you know. so that was all in the past. I, it was more, the so moving on to the on present... <laughs> um... So Nistia, sort of having said all that, sort of sits back. You see her, like, thinking. The look on her face sort of says, nope, I think I got everything. Then she notices the uh, the flask of wine on the table. You see her reach over, pick it up, sort of look inside. It is completely empty. I have drank all that shit. I said that from the beginning. This is true. They brought in a refill. Um yes. Ha! The DM has overpowered you. <laughs> I mean, frankly, though, that would have happened if you drank the entire first one. Um, so, you see her sort of look at it, shrug, and you just, you watch her drain the last of it. Not actually all that much left in there. 
but obviously some stress on her. Um, okay, so now, um, if there's nothing further before this, we're going to have research montage. Um, so you head I would back. like to talk to Mira. Oh, talk to Mira? Okay. Uh, so before research montage, um, you all leave the tent, perhaps start talking, getting to know each other a little bit. Um, Kane, you sort of, uh, you know, tip your head, maybe <laughs> say something in Thieves Can't, sort of get Mira's attention, and she wanders off a short distance with you. What was that, uh... That first job. Yes. Turns out it wasn't who we thought it was. She smiles a little bit. What do you mean, Kane? Well, we thought it was one person. Turns out it was somebody you want tea. However, did you learn that? Sneaking around Wanty Temple. Interesting. I've heard about a settlement in the forest. You went there? For a bit. Almost came this close to getting the maximum prize, but they've gotten caught. Maximum prize, huh? I see. You don't feel like elaborating. It's maybe similar to something else Tirsa was interested in. Okay. All right. Um, willing to leave that to the side for the moment. <clears throat> but question. What exactly did you find that tipped you off about um, our dragonborn friend? It was was, was it was it's like a ledger or something or a note? Yeah, you found actually a list. Did I take it? I did I take that did. list or I just glanced at it? I believe you took it. Okay. Well, I have this list here I found in um the quarters of the head honcho at that one tea temple. Uh, she holds out her hand, uh, clearly indicating she wants to look at it. I show her the list. You're not handing it to her? You're just, like, holding it out for I hand it to her in a way, which is kind of like, I'm holding that back, though. Okay. Uh, she takes it. She, you see her sort of slowly and deliberately reading down it. Then she burns it. Then she hands it back to you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. and, she, and she says, keep that secure, okay? Figured that could be useful. More than you know. Now, I'm sure you know what was supposed to go down with that poison stuff. Or, like, what was going to happen afterwards. So, let's just put all that past us. I'm okay with I that. I know I said I had some strong some choice words at the time, but uh, you can understand. Mira shrugs, and you see a look of what at least appears to be like restrained but genuine affection on her face and says there were circumstances going on back there. Suffice to say, I'm glad you pulled through. One last thing. This bangle. And I just kind of, you know, move her around a bit. We're where did you get it from? She thinks for a moment. I suppose that after I played a hand in killing you and bringing you back from the dead, I can give one answer. It was from your uncle. May have paid him a visit shortly after meeting you. As in he gave it to you, or you took it? As in, I made a visit to his residence. We had a polite conversation, and he decided of his own free will to give it to me. 
Can you say anything about it to you? That it was important that he was keeping it in care of you. But I got the sense that he was procrastinating actually giving it to you. So I decided to speed the process. Okay. All right, well, I'll try to keep in touch. Maybe a bit difficult, given everything that's going on. She shrugs. By the way, one of the names on that list, there's, well, you've kept one secret. So here's another. And I need to look something up on my sheet. Where are you? Yeah, here we go. She points to this name. And actually, the nickname would be on there because it's important. Um, Retin Cleontius. That one right there. You do you remember Teophil saying that the Dragonborn retreated into their own territory? Yes. Or actually, no, she wasn't there for that. Um, so she would actually ask, did Teophil say anything about the Dragonborn retreating into their own territory? Um, Still yes. So the ruling council of the Dragonborn has seven, or excuse me, um, has five members, one each from the gold, silver, bronze, and copper dragonborn, plus one more from the remaining clans. The vote to withdraw from the common defense was three to two. And one of those who voted for withdrawing, and she points at the name right there. I know that you were or at least, I only caught the very tail end of the conversation, but it sounded like you and your friends were going looking for some things, but... Um, oh, you weren't listening the whole time? I... I figured you might have... I'm a can't upstanding be halfling. Why would you dare accuse me of listening in? Oh, I'm so sorry. I forget. Thank you. My, my pies are known all over the North Pole. Oh. Anyways, all that's to say, if you were ever to consider a move that might help with the current practical situation, disposing of that one might not be the worst. If you and your friends aren't up for it, then I'm sure we can find somebody else. At any rate, Thanks for telling me that. All right, no problem. Again, I'll try and keep in touch. Um, Don't go out I of your way to do it, but... Oh, no, good. no, of course. But uh, if you don't hear back, if you don't hear from me for a period of time, take a visit to Tindas. I have a... Uh, distant relative there who I have a way of contacting. I may leave some information with them. You'll know when you see them. Understood. Then I head back with to whoever else is. All right. Uh, let me make a couple quick notes. They okay. had, they had stuff that they wanted like carried out to the teleportation platform, right? Uh, yeah, they're gonna be working on that. You guys are gonna have some time before that comes, and then it's honestly not gonna be that huge. They're not gonna try to move the whole thing. Um, you know, you would gather just from being around uh, that the priests are sort of dividing up. Um, a few of them are gonna accompany you to Citadel along with. 
a few of the things that they're most interested in keeping protected. Um, the rest, some of them are going to actually remain at the tower and just sort of try to hold down the fort. Um, and the rest are going to probably uh, sail back with Teofil's group. Um, okay. Is what you'd sort of gather just from the talk. <clears throat> um, all right. I think it's research montage time now. Um, so uh, Nistia would come back and sort of get a few of her priests to sort of um, help you out um, with finding your way uh, through the library of the tower um, and also give you access to, so there are some books that are more general in nature um, that are actually on the first floor of the tower, um, sort of around the central altar. Um, however, the more significant library is actually all the way up on the sixth floor. Um, so uh, when, when time came to do your thing, you would actually be escorted um, past the uh, the second, third, and fourth floor, which you wouldn't see too much, but that's all sort of living quarters. Um, the fifth floor, which contains a few more residences, um, although you'd also see a door, which would lead to sort of a sanctuary. Um, and then the sixth floor is higher than most visitors to the tower would uh, ever go, actually. Um, but being brought up here, um, you see some sort of like study rooms. Um, but also are brought into a, call it a modest library, like there's actually quite a few books, but it's like nothing like you would find in like a major city in terms of like size. Um, but yeah, and sort of get oriented to that. Um, so let me see here, you're looking for anything related to the vestiges, so that is going to be arcana checks all around except from Gamork, because he's not much help in this. Oh, come on. He could smell a good... Can Gamork read? To say it wouldn't be like an investigation. Well, you know what? <laughs> They're literally the same for me, so... Roll Arcana for Gamork, and if he rolls a nat 20, I'll give Fowl an advantage. Or if he rolls a... Tw uh, if he rolls a 15 or more. <laughs> <laughs> not that it matters, but lol. I know, but... Hey, All right, and I need to think about. I'd also like to copy the spells into my spell book when I have time. Okay. Um. Let me see. Here. Yeah, I got those two scrolls. I would just How, like. How? Uh, the... What are the scrolls that you have? Arcane, Arcane lock. lock. Yeah. Okay. Don't tell them that, Kane. <laughs> So I think Arcane Lock takes you four hours, and the other one takes you seven hours, right? Yeah, but half the time, since it's necromancy. Right. I mean, that's, like, it's normally two hours per level, so I just halved it, and it's seven. Um, so basically what they're lining up to do is, like, do your researchy stuff and, like, pack um, and stuff like that um, tonight. And then the early part of tomorrow um, will be when you'll actually make the trip to Citadel. Um, so all that's to say, uh, you can either, let me think, um, you'd have about... I want to sleep the bare minimum of four hours. That's true. I, I will say that you can get... If you skip any research, you can get them both copied. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to, like, if you want to spend any research time, that's going to come out of your time to copy these. I will spend the time that's necessary to complete both to the best of my ability. <laughs> to complete, oh, both tasks? Yes. I am a scholar. <laughs> okay. Um then I will say that, uh, you know what, I'll just make it simple. You can copy one spell or the other, but not both. It's a little bit imprecise given the different times for each, but I'll just not worry about that. 
Well, then I'll take the big one. All right, sounds good. So yeah, you'll uh, you'll get that copied. How much gold? What is it? Fifty per level, or is it's, it half? It's halved, so it was three hundred in my notes, or one fifty half. Maybe it's three hundred total. I don't know. Uh, should be one seventy five actually. Okay. Because it would normally be three fifty, but it's half. can do. All right, cool, cool. Okay, um, so yeah, so you'll sort of do that, um, you know, during the early part while everybody's sleeping into like late tomorrow morning uh, before people are about to leave. Um, okay, so in terms of research time, uh, you know, Fallon, you sort of poke around, you find some like general history stuff. Um, Maxis, you do find one book that's sort of talking like um, early settlement of Anangrun and like a little bit of like lore of some important like historical figures from the early days, but nothing about vestiges. Um, Kane, you... Let me think here. You do find something mentioning in the first, like, between one and two hundred years after Ainangrun was settled, um, about how a small sort of cult devoted to Alkadir emerged. Um, some stuff that you read makes you think that Fallon's ring was probably created around that time. Um, but what, again, when it comes to any of the artifacts you might be looking for, you sort of come up short. Um, you do find that the, uh, those people that I was mentioning actually, um, lived around Emmeline, which is, let me show you that. Um, right here. Um, it's sort of like the breadbasket of an Angrun, if you will. Um, so the group sort of developed uh, around the outskirts there. Um, and you read that they sort of retreated into the forest um, at some point. Um, and actually, because I... Hey, Fallon, that ring you get is very old. Didn't know if you knew that. But I won't let you know. I may or may not have just made some of that up, so I was just writing it down. Um, okay. And then, Colleen, you hit jackpot in an unexpected place. You find what is actually probably not the original, but a transcribed copy of a the memoirs of one of the leaders of the initial settlement. And I need to look up his name because he's a Goliath, and Goliaths in this world have ridiculous names. Um, I take offense to that. That's racist. <laughs> All right. So his name is this. Um, General Kusiru Von Kalmathani. Holy shit. Von Kalmathani. There we go. Um, what? <laughs> hey, just ask Maxis what his last name is. He actually fell in with my naming scheme. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you find these memoirs. And so you read about how um, he spent sort of his early time. Um, first, the initial settlers came into um, Dale's Harbor. And um, although they did, like Innes had granted them aid from basically a fleet of dragons, 
um, they still had to fight back a number of goblins, orcs, and other things um, that sort of occupied the territory prior to them being there. Um, but then you read all the way up until when the territories were divided, as they are now, and um, when Kisiru was rather older, um, he participated in the founding of Baj, the major Goliath city, um, as well as sort of um, establishment of how the Goliath self-rule would work, um, you know, uh, where the different tribes could be, things like that. Um, but then, close to the end, you read about how um, something that he had come across during his time in the north as a commander of the, actually one of the Javit armies, even though he was a Goliath, the uh, Dragonborn sort of put him in charge. Um, and you read about his discovery of something that he refers to only as, um, as the pendant. Um, but that he writes that he had discovered that it was something more significant than he initially thought, and that he was taking it to the glacier to ensure that it was secured for the future. And uh, where is this glacier? <laughs> Uh, so reading him say the glacier, you would immediately think of this territory in the northeast. Um, Erju Glacier is pretty much an icy wasteland um, that covers the eastern part of the Goliath territory. Uh, not many of the Goliaths actually live there. Uh, the few that do are mostly near the feet of the mountains. Um, you know, if you want to know any more information than that, you can give me a history check about Goliath customs. Real Fuck yeah. There. Okay. <laughs> uh, you have some idea that Goliaths might go out onto the glacier for something, though? <coughs> you forget no, the details. It's all about exploring cold places. <laughs> I mean, there is a Goliath in the room that you could bring in. I don't know you. This is sensitive work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you guys are going to be palling together. Yeah. Um, I, I approach our Goliath friend at, with the book, and I kind of point to the passage about the glacier and say, do you know anything about this? I, I don't, I've never been that far north. The, gl the glacier? Yeah. It's, what about it? Well... Where in a vast icy wasteland would you put treasures? Uh, well, would DM would I know? Would I have seen anything like that? A history check with advantage. All right. Thirteen. Okay. Oh. Um. You know, g good enough for something in this case for sure. Uh, let me. I need to double check something. Okay. Um, you forget the. You forget the details of what the place is like, um, but realizing that this is General Kasiru's journal, basically, or, or a copy of it, anyway. Uh, you remember um, some stories that your uncle told you when you were young. Um, and you also remember that, uh, so when you went out on the glacier, you were sort of just going as far as you could go, um, which is one sort of common way to, to sort of quest onto the glacier as a Goliath. But there's another common destination, um, which is actually a sort of like, ice palace almost um and you remember that the history of it 
had something to do with General Kasiru. Um, you don't remember whether he discovered it or made it somehow, um, but definitely reading this uh, makes you think of that as a probable location. Um, and that is, to your knowledge, sort of somewhere inland in the far northeast, maybe somewhere like around here. But I wouldn't have ever seen that on my trek through it? Uh, no, mainly because it's the kind of thing that if you're not specifically looking for it, you're likely to go right past. Okay. I mean, if you even get close enough to see it, which is unlikely given the amount of territory. All right. Well, uh, a lot of Goliaths go out on the ice. It's kind of a, a tradition for people to prove themselves, but there's several different typical ways of doing it. One of the things is going to the uh, ice palace that was uh, either made or found by the cliff breaker. I don't really know which one, but it is definitely in the center of the glacier. So, I mean, that would probably be a uh, good spot to at least check. Well, I've heard enough. I want to prove myself. Sounds like uh, we need to go to a, a glacier palace. I look him up and down and I was like, uh, you need like... Or her, actually. Clean's female. I don't know if that was clear. We're gonna have to make some stops to get supplies. If you, well, that is if I do end up going with you all. But can I see this book for a minute? Do you mind? Sure. And I'm going to look through it because I have an interest in Cliff. So. Okay. I'm is right. there anything that you're particularly looking for? Um. I would, I'd like to look at any of the stuff of, like, the early days of, like, establishing, not necessarily, uh, the, like, overall stuff, but literally his clan, because he was a clan leader, wasn't he? Uh, I mean, yeah, he would have been. Um, okay. Um, and to support this, go ahead and give me another history check. God. Okay. Um, so let me, let me think about this. Actually, I have to look up something about how Goliath names work. Um, do, do, do. where are you? Goliath. Okay. Um, right. So... Goliath names are assigned according to just sort of the clan uh, that you're in. Um, whenever there are, like, um, you know, uh, what, relations across clans, the child is a child of one clan or the other. Um, and it doesn't necessarily matter whether it's their mother or their father um, who... I, I mean, like, it's not like they always take the father's last name or always take the mother's last name. It's whatever clan they grow up with um, that they stick with. Um, so the Von Kalamathani um, clan, and let me think about this, would have been rather prominent in Baj during most of, like, about the first half of its history. Um, although you have an inkling that it's significantly smaller these days. Um, you don't remember running into anyone with this last name. Although maybe if you went to Baj and looked into it, um, you could either <clears throat> find someone from the clan or find records or something like that. Okay. Um, in terms of anything that you find in the journal, um, you would read about how he sort of got together with um, probably about seven other original clan leaders. The clans would have sort of broken up into different clans over time uh, with new clan names emerging sort of organically um, whenever a clan split. 
Um, uh, General Kasiru's clan originally sort of took the territory um, in the northeast. Um, and you sort of read about the early days of them um, mapping out that territory, um, fighting against some creatures that, like some, like, uh, some orcs that had been living in that territory before, things like that. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll just say, I'll, I guess I'll give the book back for now. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. I just say, and I kind of, at this point, is I kind of stop uh, searching for the book, probably, and I'm probably going to go and sit for a little bit. Maybe smoke. Okay. Uh, for that, you would, um, I mean, you would probably go all the way outside. At that point. What I do? Another smoker we have. <laughs> I mean, are you just lighting up in the middle of this library? No, I guess not. I'll go outside. Okay. Wait, Fallon's not the one doing this time? What? I know. <laughs> yeah, but in Maxis's case, it's uh, it's straight up leaf from the halfling territory. So. Leaf? Oh, oh I see. Some softer stuff than the salts. Did I get that brick of salt off of that cat? No, because he burned it for his ritual. Oh, I thought he had some left. That he had nasty. a tiny bit, and you didn't get it from him. <laughs> you know what? Do you want to retroactively try to steal it from him? <laughs> yeah. Kane will totally help you with that. Sure. Yes. Give me sleight of Kane hand. Help? I mean, okay. he's about to disappear. So this is going to be sleight of hand against his <laughs> passive perception. Will you ask Kane to help you? He'd be down to help you. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like encouraging this mainly just because he's no longer in the game. So yeah, let's have fun with it. Uh, yeah, you uh, add an extra five doses of salts. That's all he had on it. Working on. It. All right, cool. Um. So I'll say at this point, uh, you guys sort of wrap up your research for the night. Uh, those of you who want it um, will have a room on the second floor. Um, alternatively, you can just go out and sleep in a tent. I was there any rooms around? What? What did you say, Aaron? Sorry. Are there any ladies around? Uh, well, it's clean. There are some of the acolytes are female. A lot of them are elves. Um, they're what you got against elves, Casey? <laughs> wow, racist. Uh, I would like to aggressively flirt. I did not mean to say it that way. Um, and besides that, there are a few members of the Thieves Guild. Uh, there are Teofil's halflings, uh, which are mostly men, but there are some women as well. I would like to aggressively um, flirt with one of the elf ladies. Okay. Leads an elf lady. You, um... Elf lady. <laughs> let me see here. You go to get a beer, and I miss the best part? Come on. Where, um... Let me see here. Yeah, I mean, you want to just find one of the ones, like, attending to things on the first floor? Or... Do you want to try to find one, like, in the living quarters area? Or what? I don't look for one that's cute. What? Me. Looking for one that's cute. Yeah, I mean, there is Kaleen, so, but... Um, sure. Uh, Not him. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Uh, you gotta keep busy. As, as you, go, you go past the third floor on your way back to where your room is, you do see kind of like a small uh, kitchenette, um, sort of like side area, like break room kind of thing. Um where there is a single um, youngish looking um, acolyte who is sort of um, shaking a wine bottle back and forth a little bit and just sort of staring at the wall. Oh, hi there. How are you doing? Oh, hey, just thinking about everything that's going on. How are you? Oh, I'm alright, alright. You know, 
nothing quite like taking your mind off all this messy life stuff, is there? She shoves the bottle across the table. Want some? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you take it and drink it. It's like along the lines of a Chardonnay. Not the best you've ever had, but pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't know. I raise it, you know, appearingly. Not bad. Yeah, that's what we got. Yeah. Hear anything well, you know. about what's going on? A little bit here, a little bit there, but, you know, try to focus on it too much. Runs the mood, you know? What mood is that? The fun mood. Whatever mood is there. There's a fun mood around here these days? There's always a fun mood around when I'm around. Um, she looks up um, at your, your clothes and says, Oh, Miro's cleric. Got it. You, uh... Catching the feeling. Absolutely. All right, then. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's play a game. You sit play down and tell me something not shitty that's happened to you recently. I mean... There's a depressing atmosphere around here right now. <laughs> oh man, I got this pretty cool ring here. That was neat. That was neat. Oh, can I see it? Shiny ring. I show off my shiny new ring. It's a little busy, but it's gorgeous. I know, right? Where'd you it get that? Like, they just gave it to me. Who did? The uh, high priestess. I don't know. Your high priestess just gives you rings? Sometimes, yeah. Man, I joined the wrong religion. Am straight. Does it... Can I see it? I, I suppose. Uh, you reach for it to tug it, and then you realize that it doesn't come off. Um, and you just sort of extend your hand. She's like, yeah. She takes a close look at it. Well, that's rather gorgeous. Got anything else good looking? You're looking at it. Oh, I see how it is. All right, and at this point, uh, and she, she gives you sort of a wry smile. Um, and just for charm, I'm going to say, give me a performance check. Balls, 11. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the, 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 the night proceeds with her and, uh, you, you, you do manage to, uh, to, to make things a little cozy. But, uh, you know, towards the end of the night, she does finally beg off, sort of. And, and, you know, you have a good time. You wind up, you know, sharing a little temple gossip back and forth, getting a little loose. Maybe she even gives you a peck on the cheek um, as she's heading out. Um, but then she does ultimately uh, head back to her room for the night. Well, alrighty then. Yeah, cool. Anyone else do anything in particular during this period? Any gnome salts. convos or any such things? All right, gnome salts. Uh, oh, where is this taking place, Fallon? I wanted to sleep in. I didn't get to say it. I wanted to... You wanted to what? You said we could sleep in the tower or in a tent outside. Right. So I'm sitting outside my tent. Okay, cool. You just you just uh, cut out a little bit, so I didn't catch the last part about the tent. All right, um, so you go outside, you sort of sit down and look out over sort of the blasted landscape where the tower sits, and you fire up some salts. Roll me a d20. Like the, the double 
uh, drug experiences we're gonna have now. All right, you you fire up the the landscape, sort of starts to wave a little bit. You sort of get that, you, you know, like the good experience of being on a boat that's kind of rocking, like not the seasickness, the actual, just like it actually feels like you're rocking. It's kind of relaxing. Uh, yeah. Such grass as there is glows, you know, sort of green and purple and pink, um, all a little psychedelic. Um, the grass waves hello to you, and you wave back to the grass. Um, and then you look beside you, and you notice a uh, hunched down, sitting on his butt with his knees sort of pulled up next to him, a pit fiend. <laughs> uh, and was it, uh, shit, is it Emery or something like that? Uh, wait a minute, now I can't remember. Uh, Imra? Imra, that's right, Imra. Yeah. Um, and he says, you know, Fallon, I'm starting to get a bad feeling about these salts. Yeah, I, uh, I, I you know. They kind of help me forget how terrible things are. Kind of like staring off into nothing. And apparently now I have to fight the nothing. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, yeah. until recently, I wouldn't have understood what you meant by wanting to forget how terrible things are. But now I can imagine just a little bit. Because normally, uh, <laughs> normally I like things to be terrible. I'm kind of a... Yeah, anyways. Yeah, yeah. Different strokes. Um, right. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. I mean, it's either look at weird stuff or think about things. Well, so the good news is they put your mind in a place where it's particularly easy to talk to you like this. The bad news is, have you seen any of the nothing while you're under the influence? I mean, I haven't seen any creatures, but I mean, I've seen really strange things. Okay. Other other lands, planes, whatever. Well, keep your eye out for the creatures. I... Since I noticed that you were using the stuff, I started paying attention to where it grows, and, uh, I realize the places where it grows tend to be associated, if you know what I mean. Yeah, last time I saw one of those guys, he was the flowers, so. Hmm. Well, all right. I saw your shot, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Unfortunate for Kane, but well done. <laughs> I, uh, what was that lady's name that? The other Dravosa, is that it? Yeah. I also got to meet Dravosa. Oh. Well, that's a different chain of command, but uh, he like furrows his brow ridge thing for a moment, and then says, "Was she hot?" <laughs> totally. <laughs> I imagine. Yeah. yeah, she, uh, you know, I assume you understand my mother tried to sacrifice me, her, and she ended up kind of siding with me after a small request and yeah. me some power, and that was nice. Always nice when a sacrifice goes your way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Well... Anywho, I got mortal souls to torture, but I just wanted to let you know about the salts. Right. Good talk. Good, Good talk. talk. Um, he raises a, a, a massive, scaled, and clawed fist for a fist bump. Uh, I blow it up. <laughs> and he disappears. And uh, and you ride out the rest of your high in peace and contentment. Perfect. All right, uh, Kane, Maxis, anything for either of you? Uh, I sent you a thing in Discord, but other than that. Oh, uh, yeah, I 
Uh, either whisper it. I mean, actually, whispering to me here is the best way. Let me see what you said. Here. Say I tried, and it said that there was no one here by your name. I was really confused. Oh, uh, I mean, do it like like that. I think. Um. Anyways, no problem. You, you, oh, you have, you have to actually type the name um, after the slash w. Uh, but I do see what you're saying. Um. So yeah. Uh. So while you're on your way out of the library um you talk to one of the you talk to the acolyte or one of the acolytes who sort of showed you up show, i mean who brought you up there uh what would you say to him um i would just ask what you would have to do or who i would have to talk to uh to possibly remove a book from the library or if that was possible um, his eyes widen a little bit. He says, honestly, under normal circumstances, it would never happen from this room. However, under special circumstances, copies can be made. I can try to ask around with people who are higher level than me if it's okay in this case. Um, that being said, with everything being about to move, I don't know if we have time to make a complete copy. Um, the only other thing would be if we already had a copy made. Um, I mean, or if you get special permission to take it. All right. Is, do you know if there is a copy of the, uh, Cliff Breakers journal? Well, I can check. Because that has information that we might be needing soon. I see. Um... You know, I know that you and your companions were talking to the High Priestess. Would you like me to deliver a note, perhaps? Uh, if you want to just either do that or just tell me where she is, I will go talk to her if you want. Um, I believe she's up in her room right now, which I really shouldn't usher you any higher than that. Um, but let me go ask up the chain. Fair enough. Okay. Um, he rushes off. Um, you wait uh, in the library for probably uh, 20 minutes. Um, I would like to spend my night in the library. Okay, sounds good. Um, so, so the others have left at this point. Uh, Maxis, it's you and Colleen who are actually there at this point. Um, and uh, Nistia actually comes down and walks into the library and says, Maxis, I heard that you were asking about a journal. Yeah, there is a journal about, from the, uh, the, the uh, general of my people called the Cliff Breaker. He wrote about a, a thing that could be a vestige up in the glaciers, uh, but we're not sure. It would be helpful if we at least had a copy of the book to take with us. I see. Well, he told me what you were looking for, and I already looked into whether we had any copies. And honestly, unless I'm missing something, I think that's the only one aside from, well, the remainder of the original, which is only partial. Um... She thinks for a moment. I'll tell you what. I'll get somebody on it tonight. I don't know if they'll be able to finish. But we'll get as much as we can. And then... Even, even if they just do the last quarter and the first quarter of the book would be helpful. Uh, I think with that, that was where that was where this stuff was, right? Last. Yeah, order. actually, give me a persuasion check. This is to check for something else. I know. No, oh, sweet God, this is gonna be bad. Swag. Yeah, I got okay. zero. Um, <laughs> she she says, uh, "Okay, well, eighteen if I have advantage." I'll I'll get you as much as we can. Appreciate it. Sure thing. Um, and with that, she hurries off to go grab a few people. Um, a moment later, um, three more of the priests come in uh, and 
sort of ask you for the journal, um, basically saying they plan to work the night through on it and get you as and much say, as they can. I'm just going to, uh, I guess I'll lead them back to uh, him and say that, uh, tell him that they're going to copy down the book for us if they can. Yeah, sure. So, uh, so they get going on that. They sort of retire into one of the little like study type areas, um, and start working on that. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to go out and smoke. All right. So. You know what? Roll a D20. Cause that's what happens when people do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Two. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, you know, it, it actually, normally you never have this problem. It actually sort of turns your stomach a little bit, but it still relaxes you, which is what you were going for. Um, sort of cough at one point. You feel a little bit of a noob um, with this particular smoke, but still quality, still quality. All right. Um, okay. Have we gotten through everyone? I think we've gotten through everyone. Um, anything else before the night ends? Cool. I don't think so. All right. Um, so yeah. So you all sort of retire um, off to your own places uh, for the night. Aaron still imagining the night that almost was. Um, so close. So close. I would like to keep uh, an ear on the priest doing the copying while I stay my night in the library. Keep an ear on them? Yeah. Give me perception. Okay. Um, let me think about this. You mostly just sort of hear concerned chatter about like you know, Innis apparently disappearing. Um, you hear some sort of curious looking at the journal, sort of prioritizing what parts of it go in. Um, you hear them finally settle on um, the, the stuff describing like the period of his life um, immediately before and after um, the settlement of Anangrun. Um, as well as a lot of the stuff at the, the end of the journal. Um, so they prioritize those parts first and then fill in the rest um, sort of as they have time, um, scribing furiously. Um, trying to think if there's anything else particularly juicy that you would hear. Um... You do also overhear one of them um, mention that General Kassir has somehow actually created this, like, ice fortress himself. Um, but that it's not exactly clear from the journal how he did that. Um, but that seems interesting to you. Made it himself. Yeah, one person designing an entire whatever seems a bit much, right? Yeah. Curious. And as as soon as, I guess, dawn breaks in the morning, I'm going to head back into the thing. Collect that book. Or collect the copy, either. Uh... Brave thinking about what you just wrote. Um, okay, so I'm going to fast forward to... Um, we're going to just handle this one thing right now. Um, we get to about, um, call it, 9 in the morning. And finally you hear the sort of head scribe, if you will, say... All right, we have to get to work. I think that's about all that we're going to get through tonight. Um, and you hear sort of like moans of acceptance of that. Um, 
And he says, all right, let me go figure out where we need to put all this. Um, you hear him leave the room. There are two um, younger acolytes left in the room. Um, one male, one female. You sort of gather that they're probably going to like walk everything to where it needs to go. All right. Uh, do you want to take any action now or do you want to wait? I will wait for them to replace it and then I will replace it from there. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, so they head back to the library. Um, well, so first of all, the, you hear the older one sort of go back and just sort of give them directions on where to put everything. Um, you hear him tell the, uh, the, the girl to um, just like, like the spot on the shelf where she needs to replace the first journal and then tells the, the male one um, where uh, that he should deliver the, uh, the one that he's got to the, uh, to the Goliath, um, outside. And they sort of blearily stand up and start to go about that. Okay. Continue. Uh, okay. Um, so you watch, uh, the boy sort of leaves the room, starts to head down the stairs. Uh, the girl walks over, finds a specific spot on the shelf, replaces the journal, and walks out. And then nobody is around? Um, for the moment, no. All right. I will grab the book and put it in my bag and then use Minor Illusion to make a illusionary copy of it. How long does Minor Illusion last? Only a minute, but shouldn't notice anything out of place for a while. Okay. Um, because of things, give me sleight of hand. Okay. Um, the girl walks back in um, sort of as you're finishing your, your spell cast and says, Oh, I forgot to say... You need to leave now. And then she sort of looks down at your hands and says, Were you just casting a spell? Well, yes, dear. I am a wizard, and I believe you're very, very tired. I'll, I'll usher you to your cot now. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Um, why were you spell casting in here? Well, you see, I have to prepare a certain amount of spells per day, and the arcane magic functions differently from your divine magics. And I need to constantly practice these skills, or I could lose them. Give They're not some gift. <laughs> this is not going to end well. You don't know that. <laughs> it's definitely not ending well. <laughs> She's very, very... <laughs> It is ending very poorly. Um, so you hear yourself utter this lie, which you don't need to make hand gestures in order to prepare your spells every day. And you think to yourself, she probably knows that too. And Do I hear this happening, by the way? No, you're not even remotely close. Um, okay. But then you look at her face and realize that she's on the edge of consciousness. And she looks, she looks at you and says, all right, come on. Yeah, I, I just wrap my arm around her and say, you're, you're very, very tired. Let me take you to your bed. All right. Uh, she may have not won her insight. Um, Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, oh God. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so you head back down. Um, all right. And we are actually going to leave off here as dawn breaks, um, over Cape Faro and the Tower of Ennis. Um, Colleen, as you descend the steps, you notice sort of priests, uh, 
carrying things um, back and forth. In particular, you notice four of them um, all carrying a single box um, that, if your eyes don't mistake you, is made out of adamantine and has some very nice engravings on it. Um, so curious about what's going on with that, but you just sort of store it, or adamantium. You just sort of store it away. Or is it? What actually is it in D&D? Is it adamantine or adamantium? Anyways, whichever one it is. You sort of store that away for the future. Um, and the wizard wakes up and starts reminding himself of the sigil sequence for Citadel, which is where all this stuff is to be delivered. And that is where we leave off. Good night. I made a note. Good night, everybody. See ya.